This is Oud Wampan, if I'm saying it right. We're going to tell you about this rum tonight, which is aged in for the laser winter blend barrels. Is, right. We're here tonight with Carlos Figueroa, a Long guys? Island friend of mine, and my son Dan Agave's back. What's up? So, How are you guys? Oh, man. So my friend Wayne, Drinks with Wayne, was nice enough to give me the sample at my friend Gregor's restaurant recently. Thank you, Wayne. I liked it. And then Carlos said... I got a bottle, so I said, bring it over. You know, hard to do it with a sample. We're going to tell you guys about this. He came over to make a trade tonight, and we're going to uh, tell you guys what we think about this. So, you know, here we have, cheers, guys. Cheers, man. It's good to see everybody. So, this is a rum. Technically, it's 49 ABV. It's from the Mexican state of Michoacan. It's a reposado. And um, this is from the winter blend barrels, right? That's correct. The way I understand it is G-Scent winter blend barrels over to the distillery, which is called Jose Cleotas, and the Pancheco family are the ones who make this. And that family's been making Charanda for like over 100 years. And they're from Udwapan section of Michoacan, all right? It's only legal to make this in 16 municipalities of Michoacan. So G sent for the laser with the blend barrels to them. They sent these Charanda barrels back to Fortaleza. Right. And a matter of fact, I want to show you something. And so on the winter blend, you could see Miriam, the wife, with G. They're on the actual label there. Okay, so I guess they're friends and they traded barrels and that's a pretty cool thing. So this is made with pure sugar cane, but where are the molasses come from? So actually, the sugar cane is pressed with a water-powered mill, all right? What I was reading was molasses comes from the procedure. It, it becomes like a brown syrup. It's left over after removing the crystals from the sugar cane, which they use a press. They use like a water press on this one to actually get it out. And then they ferment and distill that molasses a little different than they do the rest of the distillate. The sugar cane is grown way up at 4,180 feet above sea level, surrounded by mangoes and berries and banana trees and all of these other wonderful things. So again, when they do the production, they use that water press to get the sugar cane out. The cane juice is then fermented in wood for 11 days. Then they take the byproduct, the molasses, and they ferment that in closed fermentation for 48 hours, okay? When it gets a distillation, it's double distilled. But again, they do it in separate parts. And that sugar juice is done in copper pot stills. But the molasses is distilled in French-style column stills. Do I understand it's rested in six months in Fortaleza casts? Yeah, six months. That's what I heard. And by the way, the soil is that bright red soil full of that iron and minerals. It's all of that's going to be in here. And the piloncillo or the sugarcane molasses must come from the denomination of origin. That's right. They have a lot of rules. Everything has to be legit. It can only come from those 16 municipalities we were talking about. So, guys, let's give this thing a shot. Look at this label, huh? This is really cool. I have never had it before but until Wayne gave me those sips. I found it to be delicious, really sweet, really nice. Not sure if there's a lot of agave, but I'm gonna see what my friends think about it. These bottles are going for about 60 bucks, that's all, right? Yeah. I saw them from uh, 50 to $60. Well, this is nice, it's like a burnt sugar, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like prunes or raisins, what do you think? I get a little bit of grape on it, actually. Honey. He gets grape, cherry, right, maybe? Very sugary. I agree with the honey as well. Earthy and minerals. And the plum. Plum. Mm -hmm. Funky for sure. Honey, honey, plum honey, plum honey, plum. honey, yeah. honey, right? Yeah. Like molasses. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of like what this exactly smells. Spicy. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Like a jalapeno pepper, but not really strong one. Mm -hmm. Like a light one, mm -hmm. a mild, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But very sugary, I'd say. It's got a really nice nose, really tasty with a lot of flavors going on. I, I don't know if you'd consider this added to free. I don't know how that works with rum. But yeah. wow, what are you guys, what are you guys thinking on this before you pleasant like nose? It. Yeah, really pleasant, like an XA, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, it reminds it, me a lot of, of characteristics is like an extra añejo in tequila in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to drink. I've so had I'm a good. lot that that smell like this. Okay, let's give yeah. it a shot, guys. Oh, I like it. I had a feeling you would. My son it's loves good. extra añejo. That's his. That's his thing. Right. Actually, it's pretty good. I know it is. But here's the question. Do we taste agave? Mm. Right? I don't know, Carlos. Oh, I, I do a little. But... Oh, Dan, if you're tasting it, you're getting some of the presents from the, yeah, the, from yeah, the yeah. winter blend barrels. Yeah. 
I get maybe a tiny, I do ever a so bit. slightly. Yeah, I would say ever so slightly. It's very pleasant, but very, very I guess distant. you could tell if you really drank a lot of it and you really got into it that maybe there's a little bit of agave presence in there. So for you tequila purists, I'm not quite sure if this is your bag or not, but it's a nice sweet. Damn, oh, yeah. I, like, I actually like it. I'm, After I'm dinner, maybe. No. Yeah, well, no, this is. I got to get a bottle of this for mm -hmm. sure. It honestly tastes like a blend between tequila and rum. Uh, so if you like both, it's you're going to love yeah, this. Yeah, that's a good way of putting mm -hmm. it, actually. And if, and if you like aged tequila, you're going to love this. Oh, yeah, it definitely, right? If you had to compare it to a tequila, we're looking at at least a heavy aged on Yeho. Of course. If not an extra on Yeho, for course. sure, you know? So it is. Charanda Uruapan. I have my Guatemalan friends <laughs> speaking it the right way. It's really good. It's Very different. Good. Yeah, it's really nice. It's so spicy. You get mm -hmm. no spices you now, too? a little too? spicy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. So, you know, the Pancheco family, they did a really great job with this from the state of Michoacan. This is a nice reposado using those four delays and casts. You guys might want to run out and grab this. I don't see any reason why not. Right? I mean, it, I think it's great. My I, son I loved it. This I know. I knew he yeah. was going to like it because he loves extra on yayo. And it does have that type of presence. Mm -hmm. So they, this is maybe the next big thing, you know. Um, I, I love it. Too, 49%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 49 yeah. ABV. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. This is really nice. Um, thank you, Carlos, for bringing this over. Of course, of course. I've got a really nice label again, you know, single cask and all of that. Look at this nice label. You guys should really run out and try to get this. Charanda Uruapan.